Okay, so if you remember at the very beginning, I said uh, the Vickery auction or the second price auction is strategically equivalent, quote and quote, uh, with uh, uh, English auction or ascending bid uh, auction. So uh, here is a sort of a more formal uh, uh, statement about these two auctions. So once again, the Vickery auction is the one where the highest bidder wins. However, he pays the second highest bid. And the English auction is that uh, it's, a, it's an open bid auction. Uh, so everybody starts bidding. Uh, so everybody can observe everybody else's uh, bids. And then as the bids increase, you know, some bidders exit. Well, whoever uh, remains in the auction uh, wins the object. And obviously he pays the last announced bid. Uh, which is basically the uh, uh, highest losing bid. So, in an independent private value setting, so that's very important because the, uh, the following statements are not true if uh, the values are not private or if they're not independent. So, in an independent private value setting, Nash equilibria, uh, again, there might be many Nash equilibrium, of the English auction, so EA is the English auction, but all the Nash equilibria of the English auction are the same as the Nash equilibrium of the Vickery auction. In particular, if we look at the unique symmetric equilibrium or unique symmetric uh, uh, sequential equilibrium of the English auction, so a sequential equilibrium is uh, a, a stronger equilibrium concept than Bayesian Nash equilibrium. And the sequential equilibrium is an equilibrium concept that we use in games with incomplete information, but in an extensive form games. All right, so the unique sequential equilibrium of the English auction has each bidder dropping out when the price reaches his value. All right, so in equilibrium, in a sequential equilibrium in the English auction, as the price rises, each bidder quits or drops out when the bids uh, hits his or her uh, valuation. In equilibrium, I'm, I'm going to talk about the equilibrium outcome, the auction, the English auction, ends when the bidder with the second highest value drops out. Okay? And so the winner pays on the amount equal to the second highest value. Well, um, so one final thing is, 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 is the following note, uh, and which is very important uh, conclusion, actually. Uh, uh, the first and the second price auctions yield exactly same revenue in expectation. All right? So what does that mean? That means if you are an auctioneer, if you want to run an auction, again, under independent private value setting, uh, well, obviously, you want to sell the, uh, the, your, your, your good at, a, at the highest possible price. Well, obviously, you don't know the valuation of the bidders. You have some estimation, guess that their valuations will be distributed in this interval according to this probability distribution function. So you want to, as a seller, you want to maximize your expected revenue. So which auction mechanism you should use? You, should you sell this uh, product with the first price auction or should you sell it with the second price auction? Obviously, two option, uh, auctions have different rules. And remember, uh, the winners pay different values. In the one auction, each bidder uh, pays his, his, his own bid. Uh, the winner actually pays his own bid. In the second price auction, uh, the winner only pays the second uh, highest bid. So, but what about the revenues? Well, that theorem says in this setup, whether you sell this product with a first price auction or second price auction doesn't matter because they are going to yield the same revenue, but in expected terms. Okay. Um, well, one thing, obviously, Remember, the second price auction can actually have a bunch of different non-symmetric equilibria, uh, right? I mean, one guy bids his value and everybody else bids uh, nothing, zero. If that is the case, clearly your expected revenue is going to be zero. But if you run first price auction, 
Uh, and if the players are playing symmetric uh, based in Nash equilibrium, which we uh, characterized, well, then clearly first price auction is going to give you a higher expected surplus. So here, uh, this comparison, this, this theorem is, is slightly tricky because we are focusing on particular equilibria, all right? That means a particular equilibrium of second price auction where everybody uh, 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 bids his true value. Uh, and the particular equilibrium in the first price auction where everybody bids uh, according to the uh, bidding function B, which we characterized in the previous episode. Well, if those are the equilibrium in those two different games, uh, well, then the seller's revenue in expected terms will be the same. But obviously, if there are different uh, if the players are playing different equilibria, well, then, uh, you know, the, 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 these two mechanisms, these two auctions can lead to different uh, uh, expected revenues. Uh, but the reason why we nevertheless state this result is that the equilibrium or the equilibria we characterize for second price auction and the first price auction are intuitive in the sense that well, players are symmetric, and so they are using a symmetric bidding function, all right? And in the second price auction, again, players are symmetric, and so they're also uh, bidding, uh, using a symmetric bidding auction, which is just tell the truth uh, kind of strategy. So, uh, you know, and it's a dominant strategy equilibrium, remember, although it is weakly. So in that sense, these are highly likely, uh, quote unquote, uh, equilibrium uh, equilibria and so I mean again it's like highly likely what, what does that mean uh, uh, let me leave it vague because there's no such uh, you know formal description uh, but you can confidently say unless players do some awkward things uh, you should be getting uh, in expected terms same revenue under both uh, auction methods well uh, I'm going to talk about an even stronger result than this, which basically will say, you know what? A lot of auctions actually lead to uh, same revenue under independent and private value setting, but obviously those auctions should satisfy some you know, uh, properties. So we call it revenue equivalence theorem, and this is what we will be talking about in the next episode.